What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and welcome to another Gameplay Explained video. Today, we're going to be looking at Vampire's social system. This is a citizen menu that you have within the game that covers the various different districts. So let's jump right on into this. As I talked about in the review, one of the things that you notice in the game is there's this really interesting tit for tat when it comes to how you end up leveling up in the game. You can get experience points from quests and from killing enemies, but it's very low. In fact, one of the major ways for you to get any experience in the game is to actually end up biting and killing the people who live in each district. Now, this affects the morale right here on the left, the health status. This is the overall health status of everybody here and really the way the characters all feel all the way down to hostile. If they get down to hostile, that means they will end up evacuating that district and that district will end up flooding with enemies. So you have to really watch out for that. And there are, of course, a couple ways to raise it, like doing quests and or helping people in the local area. So looking at one of these characters just for a second, you can see their name in the top right corner, their social circle, which is usually one or two or three people connected to them and their blood bar. Now, this is how many experience points you're going to get if you end up killing them. But you can see here that there are four hints and only one is unlocked. And that's why the little red bar draws to the 21 XP. 2100 XP for this character is because I ended up finding out that Newton has a phobia of rats. Now, this is a very early character, so it's not anything spoiled. All the other hints will raise up that bar accordingly, and you'll get more and more experience the more you know about the character. Because a lot of the lore that goes with Vampire is the fact that the more you know about people, the more experience is within their blood and the more attuned you can be. So that when you finally do decide to turn him into a Capri Sun, you will end up getting more experience points. Another system you have interlaid with this one is the fact that you need to have a Mesmerize ability higher than the willpower of the character, Newton's being three, and your level for Mesmerize being connected to the various different quests that you've done and what level you are. Also, make no mistake, the game really does end up tying in everybody together. Now, you can see he's only got a social circle of one, and that person is sick, which I'll show you a bit of their life tab in a second. The social circle is very important because that means anything you do to Newton is going to in some way affect Oswald. Now, here you can see that he suffers from neuralgia, and you can heal that. And you can see now he's at like 200 because, frankly, no one wants to end up sucking on some STD-ridden fool. So you end up healing them. That percentage goes up and goes back to normal, and then you continue to unlock different hints in your different quests, which has that blood quality go higher. And speaking of quests, let's jump to that. So you have your four different section of quests. Now, the quest, as I said, can end up raising the morale of the local area, but also as you do them and as you read journals and as you go and discover different elements for these people, you end up finding new hints that you can then turn around and talk to them and raise their experience again. So you can see how quickly this turns into this really cool cycle, this tit for tat that you have of power versus experience and what you want to end up doing. And all these people are basically mobile health bars. You can just sort of decide at any point that you want to kill them. But when you do, it affects everyone around them. And I mean that there's not small effects either. They can be massive. Massive ones. For example, killing somebody can end up sending a partner or a friend into despair. But at the same time, you might end up finding out that the person's happy that it's happened. And it's something that you see throughout the game and certainly reflected in all the social skills as well as the experience you get from them. I really enjoy those systems. Also something I explained in the review, but people ended up asking me this morning if I could give some more information. And that's how do you get impacted? How does the world get impacted by killing people? Well, one of the cool things is when everybody leaves and a place turns hostile, what ends up happening is everybody's gone and you can find these little investigative markers in those locations that will sometimes give you some really cool data about where they went or what's happened to them when the evacuation happened. And like I said in the review, not everybody gets out safe. So sometimes you'll end up going to a place and you'll find a monster with their own vocal cues and everything where a human used to be. And you can basically tell that this person has ended up turning into the undead. It's very cool stuff. And it certainly does add to the atmosphere. I think when you look at the social systems and you look at the way the game handles combat, it really does focus on the ability or the desire for a player to achieve a social status that's different in most games. Most games, the honest truth is, other than a couple times where you can do some various things or pay somebody off, but usually they're not as energetic as they are in Vampire. Here, you certainly do notice a lot of these changes especially when you identify with the fact that really this is a game where you're going to hear a lot of people not really understanding how the combat ends up working. Some are going to find it hard, 
But that is all wrapped up in the skills because is it easy to kill a bunch of people so that the combat is easy? Well, if that works for you, then it's something that you can do, but your choices will subtly change. If you're somebody who wants to keep a lot of people alive, combat will overall be far more difficult, but at the same time, you'll be able to find out more about the world. That's what I love here. It's not one of those titles that you can mini max for lore where you just run around and look at journal after journal and try to figure out how somebody ended up writing their last moments in a fucking diary as they were getting killed by a werewolf. Instead, it is a far more subtle layering, and certainly I can see some people when they experience it and they see the way these social systems work, they will be confused a bit. They will be a little bit taken aback. But overall, I have to say, I personally feel that it offers something in the space that is really unique. And this is one of the first times where characters really did feel like they were one after the other and they were connected. I mean, how many times have we played a game where you end up killing a guard standing next to another guard and 35 seconds after he's been alerted, he returns to normal and forgets that Joe Bob just suddenly fucking disappeared. That never happens here and it's all the stronger for it. It ties everybody narratively together and really solidifies the fiction to cause you to feel like you're buying into all of this story and all of this lore. It's my hope that we see other developers sort of look at this and look at a lot of the changes that have happened in 2017 and 2018. We've seen reboots of titles use dramatically different camera angles, for example, to end up offering us something different. We see something like this, which offers a really unique social system. I can't wait to see what we see from other developers who maybe look at this and say, you know what, our characters aren't that advanced. The AI isn't that good, or these people don't really care about one another. How do we put everybody together? Because how many times have you entered that town where everybody's like, please save us, and there's five people there and none of them seem to actually know that any of the others exist. That kind of stuff is something I want to see changed, and I think Vampyr, at least a little bit, sort of pushes the fact that that can happen. So anyway, that's it for me. Hope you guys like these videos. If you have further questions about Vampyr or any of the other games I've reviewed or are reviewing, you can certainly end up putting a comment in the comments section and I will try to get to those. I love these videos. They're fun to do. So if you have any questions, feel free as well. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or Twitter or Patreon. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.